Your argument is essentially this: if God is not God, if God is not all of His attributes working all of the time, He's not God. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Then you have a problem as a Muslim. Do the words of the Quran, are the words of the Quran eternal? In other words, is the speech, is the speech of Iblis that is recorded in the Quran eternal or, or not? The reason why you're struggling is because you're defending irrationality and you're a rational human being. Your rationality is telling you that this is nonsense, but your, 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 the but fact that you're a Muslim is telling you that you have to defend it. But by virtue of humanity, he can, he can access less information and less more. So basically, by virtue of his humanity, can he forget that he's God? You're the worst of nobody, Bob. What's your name? No, no, don't talk, please. Don't, ex don't expect any respect from me. You're the worst of nobody. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we are going to have a conversation. Yeah, now. I can speak wherever I want. Sorry, I can um, enjoy, I can yeah, Carl, speak as well. Um, me and Carl know each other for a few years. Yeah, 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 he yeah, recommended yeah, to come to you regarding a few questions. Okay. Because we've been debating in university. He's Christian. You're the worst of nobody. So we used to debate in university. I'm Muslim and he's Christian. And we used to have a chance. Just regarding, I have a question regarding this. Okay. You know, it's glory and attribute of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Glory, no, glory is something that we do to God. Okay, because it is a, it is a, an energy. It is an uncreated energy that that begins in a moment of time when there are those to give glory to God. Okay, because so I was wondering, um, in terms of like, because the topic was on God uh, entering creation. Yeah. And I was wondering, do you believe personally that God has to limit one of His attributes to enter creation? No. Because in the Bible, I think Jesus mentions that it doesn't know the time, time or the end. Yes, that's correct. But in that aspect, Jesus is an all-knowing in that yep. situation. Yep. So how how is he not limiting the attribute of like yeah, yeah. all-knowing? Yeah. Okay. In that so when 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 we when we, when we talk when we talk about when we talk about this, yeah. Me. Yeah. You stood right there, bro. You're choosing to stand. I'm right not, I was talking to you. I was talking to him. Stop whinging. I'm talking to you. So in terms of in terms Bullying, of. In terms of, uh, uh, as, as, as if you're worried, as if you're worried. <laughs> so, in terms of the Council of Chalcedon, yeah. what we say is that Christ has two natures in the one person. Yeah. These natures are not confused, they're not mingled, they're not changed, yeah. they're not separated, and they're not divided. Yeah. Okay. So, the attribute of the divine, the lo divine logos, yeah. takes on the fullness of humanity. Okay. Okay. That fullness of humanity is not confused, it's not commingled, it's not separate to, it's not divided from, but it but it does not change either. Okay? So when the Logos becomes a man, becomes a full man, just like me and you, and we have conscious knowledge and unconscious knowledge. Knowledge of which we are consciously aware, a knowledge which is beyond our reach. It's there, but it is not accessible to our conscious mind. Agreed? That's how humans operate, right? And this question about, camera, about, about the, the no about knowing the, the day nor the hour yeah. Yeah, falls into that category of knowledge that is present but not accessible. Now let me finish. Yeah, because it says in Scripture, it says in the in Luke uh, that Christ grew in wisdom and knowledge before his parents. It says in the book of Acts that Christ came to reveal times and seasons. So that which was relevant to what he came to do in his earthly life is what was the accessible knowledge to him. As God, as pure God, he knows all of physics. But obviously, we Christians aren't going around saying Christ knew the, 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 the theory of relativity 2,000 years ago. Um, so, like, God so, the Son. Do you absorb what I've said? I'm saying that knowledge that, that knowledge that was not relevant to his earthly ministry is placed within uh, his unconscious. But he's, it's not accessible, so that means he's not all in, in, in that in sun, in his form of being a sun. Yeah, by virtue of his humanity. Yeah. By virtue of his humanity. Yeah. But in that in, in that phrase, he says, um, nor the son, only the father knows. Yeah. And the son is fully God according to Christianity, right? Correct. So he, he, but how can he be how can he be fully God when he wait, can't wait, access wait, knowledge. Wait, 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 right. Wait, wait, wait. So, you know, so what we what we've said, yeah, yeah, yeah. what we've said, yeah. is that, that Christ becomes fully man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. When Christ Christ refers to himself as the Son multiple times in his earthly life, and he's talking about the fullness of himself. Okay. So okay. it's not that we separate out this term just to refer to his divinity. 
It refers to his person, the one person of Christ. Are you saying that's a dual thing? In the, when he's saying the Son, he's not just There's one God person the within two natures yeah. that operates through two natures. Those two natures operate. So that means that when Christ had a humanity, he had a conscious knowledge and an unconscious knowledge, just like every human being here does. Those things that were, that were not relevant to his ministry on earth were not accessible to him. That doesn't mean that that knowledge has disappeared. It doesn't mean that that knowledge is not something present there with him. It just means that by virtue of his humanity is not accessible at that moment. Because they don't know then, I will be lying then. You must say I don't want to tell you no. Sorry, uh, That's different. Uh, is it okay if I transition to the, uh, the question that I had? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, it's yeah, related yeah, to like God the man and God the son. I just, uh, I just want to, I just want to, uh, I just want to bring it out. Yeah. Uh, in the book of Acts, after the resurrection, yeah, the apostles asked uh, Christ this. So the, when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? Yeah. He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Syria. So what it's saying is that not I, that he hasn't come to reveal everything to them. But, um, sorry, if, 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 you can, if, you can, if you can like, if uh, God the Father can put restrictions on God the Son, that's it. Sitting that God the Father has placed restrictions on God the Son. By virtue of his humanity. By virtue of his humanity, yes. But by virtue of humanity, he can, he can access less information and less more. So basically, by virtue of his humanity, can he forget that he's God? Because humanity has, has, the, has the ability to forget. Yeah. And by virtue of his humanity, theoretically, he can forget that he's God himself. By so virtue that can mean that. Can mean that as, a, as, a, so as a hypothetical question, yeah. as a hypothetical question, I'm going to entertain it in all seriousness. Yeah. But so say that could probably really mean that, like I mean, for example, Carl could be God. It's a good, it's because, a good hypothetical question. Yes, yeah. that can mean God, Carl could be God. But for example, wait, wait, wait. Why can a Carl be God? No, no, I'm, I'm talking about my friend. Sorry. It's oh, Carl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he, he can hypothetically be God, but he's just forgotten the fact that he's God because he's limited by his humanity. Well, this is a good hypothetical question, but we have to deal with what what actually Christians believe about Jesus. We don't believe that Jesus forgot that he was God. Yeah, but if the avenue is open there, like if the avenue of the ability to forget is open, yes. Yeah, Surely we can't just... Like, or rather, the, the attribute... This is not about forgetting, though. We're talking about something that is accessible. This is not about forgetting. This is about what is accessible. But it could also not be accessible, the knowledge of knowing that you're God. By virtue of your Would body. you agree that humans can grow into knowledge? Yeah. That great humans do grow into knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So, in terms of in terms of Christ operating through his humanity, there has to be limits, right? There's a limited shape. Yeah. There's a limited lifespan. Yeah. You're born. You die. Christ is operating through his humanity. You, you, I mean, if you're a good human being, you pray to God. The, the son prays to the father. And he's operating through his humanity. He has to have limits of knowledge. So, in terms of those limits of knowledge, we've got to be clear. It's not that those that knowledge is not present. That knowledge is present in the person of Jesus. It is just not accessible by the virtue of his humanity. I have a similar question. Like from I'm, I'm not talking to him. Bro. I have a similar question. I'm asking. Is bro, he's just going to stop being rude if you let him into this conversation. No, 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 you will lose this no, conversation. Give me a good comment. No, I'm not being rude. You, you will be, he, he, he's he's demonstrated he's being rude. Bro, I'm going to give you this choice. You either, bro, 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 bro. you got a choice. You talk to me or you talk to him. What do you want to do? Is it possible that the man said... Carry on, what was your plan? Is it possible that the man said... Don't be intimidated by this guy. I told you not to let him in. In terms of this... So you're saying... Is it possible that the man said... I'm sorry, he's being rude. Speak up to him. The issue is like, it's not accessible, right? Okay. Well, the knowledge is there. The knowledge is there. The knowledge is there. The knowledge is not accessible. It's not accessible, right? But that can mean that God could be uh, oh, here right now because he. The knowledge is there, but it's just not accessible to him. Correct. That he's God. Yes. So, no, not that he's God. Yeah. The knowledge is not there about this question because he wasn't sent here to reveal this question. All over the place. He wasn't sent here to reveal the day or the hour. He was sent here for a purpose. And if you read the Gospels, the purpose is very clear. His purpose is to defeat sin and its effect on our lives. It is to free us from the fear of death. It is to conquer death itself, to destroy the powers of darkness over humanity, so that humanity 
can enter into the presence of God. But do you That's his mission. But do you not see it's quite worrying that um, this specific issue that you can't access knowledge, so there's like no limit to what you can't access? I think I think one of, like a theory, a, I, I think one of, one of the issues that I have with your argument is it assumes that the defining characteristic, the defining nature or essence of God is knowledge. But that is one of his defining aspects, like his defining features. Now, let's, let's, let's just think about this logically. Sure. So, you're saying that because God, by virtue of his humanity, doesn't have access to all of his knowledge in his humanity, yeah, yeah. that therefore he's not God, is that correct? No, no. that therefore, there's no, there's no limit to what you can't access. Because if you open that the, door the, that you can't access something... Well, no, 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 th those limits are set by himself. Sure, yeah, but, but where is like... No, where would you agree that uh, what we can access as knowledge is set for us by God? Yeah. yeah. Right, so who's setting the limits on the knowledge that, that God, God can access God by virtue of his humanity? God himself. Right, so, so this is something that he has control of, right? Yeah, yeah. So it sits under his authority, correct? Does it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay then, so if it sits under his authority, right? Your argument, if I'm... and don't, don't get me wrong, and, no, 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 and correct yeah. me if I'm misquoting, sure, sure. your argument is essentially this, if God is not... God, if God is not all of his attributes working all of the time, he's not God, is that correct? Yeah. Right. Then you have a problem as a Muslim. You have a problem as a Muslim. Right? So, a, so now you're going to see what Salafism looks like. So, see what I mean? See what I mean? So, do you agree with his behaviour? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Do you agree with his behaviour? No, it's different from me. I know you are different from me. I know you are different from me. Do you agree with his behaviour? No, because it's different. You don't know you. I know you. Do you agree with his behaviour? I say you are different from me because you don't know him. I know him. Do you agree or disagree He's a rude guy, so he deserves rudeness. He's too nice to comment. Yes. He's too nice to comment. Rude guy, so too nice to <laughs> Do you think he's being rude? Nice guy. Wow. He's passion. So when a Muslim is being rude nice to a Christian, guy. it's just passion. Shame on you, I man. Was, I was, I was here last Shame yeah. on you. But watch you two, Masiba, so, following another. Know, so, no, watch you two. So, you see this guy following another yeah. white Christian guy, Ron. So, so, call him everything. Let's let's come back to this. He's a nice guy. So I don't have to be nice to him. Am I being nice to you? Yeah, yeah. That's him, that's why him is fine, but I don't have to be nice to you. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so, so no, no, my point is to you. As a Muslim, I'm not just going to go to the temple. You believe in the 99 attributes of Allah. I am angry when just go to the temple. One of those attributes is mercy, wow. correct? You know, just get angry to someone. Can you give me an example of mercy that is not a transaction? You just get angry sometimes. It's in the Bible. Um, okay. So, Bob, you get angry, Bob. You get... So, uh, there's an example in the Hadith <laughs> where someone says that. They want to um, access heaven like through cried, their own like works. Nice guy. I'm sorry? They he want to shot, access heaven through their own works. To, so like through their Allah. own deeds, they want to access heaven. And so God the Bible says doesn't what, what, God, what like basically no one can access heaven without the same God's measurement. mercy. Be careful in measurement. It's not dependent on the so like, right, I can't hear you over this. You're too quiet and he's too loud. Bro, you're going to have to speak. Go, go, go. Let's move on. You were saying, um, yeah, it was about um, in terms of like no one can enter heaven, yeah, based on their deeds alone, it has to be through God's mercy, yeah. So that's a transaction, right? That's not a transaction, yeah, it is because it's between two parties. Allah is giving mercy to the believers, yeah, yeah. So that's a transaction, okay, right, yeah. So before no, no, creation, no, 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 was Allah no, merciful no, 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 no. to before creation, but he's like the ever creator, so. yeah. So creation is eternal. No, no, no. Sorry. So creation is not eternal. Yeah, yeah. So who is he giving mercy to before creation? In terms of like... I don't want to comment on something like... like My point is that within Islamic doctrine, you have the idea that, that the attributes of God yeah. are not in operation. Are you saying like because there's no there was no one? Allah is merciful, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's never telling his character, but, but he's not merciful until there's someone to be merciful to. But surely the act of creating, is a mercy like the, the intention he had of the act of creating, is a mercy. He's gonna but that's mercy a transaction. To... My point is before creation, who is he merciful to? Who's merciful? Like, who was there to be merciful to before he created anything? I mean, I, I don't want to. Comment. Was he being merciful to himself? I don't. Want to what did he do wrong to be merciful to? The intent was there uh, to create. Right. Allah always, the scholar says Allah always yeah, create. Yeah, yeah. Allah eternally create. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's created. So, 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 do you, do you believe that creation is eternal? Not so. You're pantheist. No, 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 no. I wanted to, but surely, like what I was mentioning before, opens the door to pantheism in regards to like if 
God my, can't access knowledge. So let, 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 let me bring it back to the incarnation because I'm not trying to run away from the topic. My point to you is that within Islamic Taweed, within the doctrines of Islam about what you believe about Allah, you have the idea, nascent within your own beliefs, that the attributes of God are not always in operation. They are there, they are present in Allah. Allah is merciful. But his mercy is not in operation until he has something to be in operation to. That's not true. Now, within the incarnation, the knowledge of God is present, but it is not in operation. That's not our doctrine. That's lying. You get that? Allah mercy always active. Next question. Allah mercy always active. In regarding, do you believe God the Father and God the Son have the same will? God the Father and God and the Son have the same will. This is a question that I'm just starting to dig into. Okay. That's my part of my religion. We believe as Christians that in the incarnation, yeah. Christ has two Allah wills. Allah a human Allah will, Allah and will and a divine will. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And that the divine will is always to do the will of the Father. Okay. So, and the human will yeah. that we see, like for instance in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he says, you know, Father, if it is your will, remove yeah, this cup right. from my yeah. hand, but not my will, but your yeah, will be done, yeah. is an example of the human will with the, a, with the a son's it's divine will. The human will. The human will. The 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 no, it's not against. It's not against. The church condemns that as a heresy. We don't teach that. Okay. The human will. The human will is is conforming to the divine will, which is what a perfect human being should do. The perfect human being should conform their will to the divine will. So I, I just wanted to, um, in terms of the Garden of Gethsemane, that is a conversation, I just want to clarify this, um, that is a conversation between um, Jesus the human with Jesus the divine son? No. Not, not, Jesus, not the divine son with the father? No, so who, that, who that, is, that is a discussion because we, what, what, the, the thing is, who's your line of argument yeah. presupposes two persons there. We don't believe in two persons, we believe in one person. Okay, okay. So Jesus is speaking to the Father. Jesus as the God-man is speaking to yes, the Father. Yes, Jesus as okay. the God-man is speaking to the Father. I wasn't sure if it's... Um, and okay. this conversation is operating out of the human will. Because the human will has to, as it were, travel through human desires, human intentions, human fears, human anxieties, human... You know, it's got to travel through all of that to get to wherever it's going. You've got to make a choice, but you make a choice through time and space and circumstance and, you know, your own mind, your own fears, your own needs, your own desires. You know, me and you might want to talk to one another, but if one of us really needs the toilet, our will to stay here and talk has got to travel through that need. Do you know what I'm saying? So when Christ, the one person of Christ, is saying, Father, if it is your will, remove this cup from my hand, his human will is traveling through very human fears and very human anxieties about the upcoming crucifixion yeah to arrive at that's perfect submission it corresponds with and cooperates with the divine will which is what every human being needs to do so it's not because i was thinking like this was my my understanding yeah. passage before you mentioned this but my understanding was it was either God the um, God the Son speaking to God the Father saying if not my will your will be done that's incorrect that's, uh, sorry say um, that again. it was God the Son yep. speaking to God the Father saying if not my will your will be done yeah it is it is God the Son but you've got to remember when we say when we don't make I'm, a division I'm, I'm, I'm separating the I was separating yeah what we're saying is you don't okay. you don't confuse the natures mm-hmm. you don't mix the natures you don't change the natures but you don't separate the natures because if you okay yeah. because i was thinking because in the in the one person the one person of christ operates through both divine and human nature so let me give you an example of what that looks like particularly about death because yeah. obviously this is a bit contentious how can christ die if he's god yeah yeah it's a fair question it is a fair question it's just being mutilated by muslims who don't understand christian theology we say that both the human and the divine nature pass through death. But the way that they respond, the way that it affects them, is different according to their nature. So, for example, if I get an iron rod and a wooden rod and chuck them both into a river, the iron rod will sink and the wooden rod will float over the river. They've both gone into the same thing, 
but they have behaved totally differently. One passes over the top and the other one sinks to the bottom. And so it is with the human and divine nature. The hu at death, and in many of these questions, the, the death affects the human nature. It, it, it kills it. But the divine nature passes through death unblemished, untouched, uncorrupted by it, unchanged by it. Sorry, um, just in regards to like regarding death enemy. Yeah. Um, the like the human nature, the God human nature of Jesus is going against. Uh, was originally against the will of the Father, right? In that specific no, not against. Not against, but um, was never against. Was not aligned with the will of the no, Father. No, it was. No, 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 no. You, you misunderstood me, so I'm going to try and break it down. For you. It's not against. Yeah, he's asking a question. It's appropriate to ask God questions. But he says, if not my will, no. your will be done. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, they have a difference of wills. Yeah, no, no, hold on one second. No, that's not what that passage is saying. Shall we go to it? It's yeah, in yeah, Luke. Sure. Yeah, because the thing is, people always get stuck on that bit and they forget the bit that comes be, uh, a bit later on. Okay, because I was thinking, I, I, I was just going to present my, um, what I was going to say. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it would have it. probably been attacking the wrong thing. Sure, go on. But, but no, go on. Mean, um, it makes like, it. if the son's will is... If the human son's, w if the human nature's son's will is against God the Father's will, it's kind of a human sacrifice in a way because it, this, the human nature of Christ is being taken against his will by God the Father. Oh, right. Is there a bodily sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, so let, he's, let, being, let, he's being sacrificed let, as a human sacrifice against so, his will. So, so let, let's read it. And he came out and proceeded, as was as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples who followed him. Yeah. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Yeah? That is not stating what his will is. Because his will is, if you listen to that prayer, he's saying that my will is to do your will. Wait, sorry, what was that uh, the, the bit the, about the, remove, your, remove the cup? Father, if you are willing, yeah. remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. So what is the will of the Son? To do the Father's will or not? But why would he ask the question? Why would he entertain the possibility of removing the will, um, removing the cup? Because, the same will. because but, but, well, well, I, I will definitely answer that question. Yeah, sure. I am not going to avoid it. Sure. But would you agree with me that that passage shows that the will of Jesus is to do the will of the Father? Because he's submitting to the Father's will. He's saying, your will be done. Um, like, eventual submission. Like, he wants an eventual aligning of wills. But in that specific case, like, just predating that eventual aligning, there's a separation of wills. I, I, I disagree because this is a singular prayer. And it literally says, not my will, but yours be done. So you're saying like not my will yeah yours. yeah exactly oh, yeah. not my will but yours be done so what is the will of Jesus to do the will of the father he's literally saying not my will but yours be done so is it fair of me to say that the will of Jesus is to do the will of the father um, yeah, I guess. yeah that's what's happening here but now we've come back to the point that you were talking about his human will is still human and it has to travel full the, full, through the fullness of his humanity. And a human being facing death is going to be anxious, right? Yeah. A human being facing death is going to be having trepidation, right? So his human will has to traverse the fullness of his humanity. But it does and it agrees with the divine will. But in, in, in your interpretation, is there any... You, I think you mentioned earlier that there is a possibility of two wills. We Christians definitely believe in two wills. Two wills. It, we, we, we absolutely believe in two wills. And the reason, and this is going to be some good reading for you to know more about our Christian faith, is Mac, read Maximus the Confessor. Maximus the Confessor was the church father who, who defended the idea of the two wills. Because it flows naturally that if Christ has a complete human nature, he must all, then he must have a human will. Yeah, because yeah. if he doesn't have a human will, he doesn't have a human nature. And through this human will, isn't it submitting to... Uh, I mean, that human will, it's the human will that's questioning the Father, right? No, it's not. Yeah, it's asking the question. Yeah, yeah. so it's the human will that's questioning the Father. And it's, and it's the person of Christ 
questioning the father through his human will. That's it. Okay, let's take a one first. Okay, so the person who has the father questioning through his human will. Okay. But, so, the human will. Like, wasn't Christ like tempted in the desert, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. By virtue of his humanity. By virtue of his humanity. You know that so, temptation is not a sin, right? Um, I mean, being it, tempted it depends, is, it depends. No, being tempted is never a sin. Being tempted oh, oh, is okay. not a sin. Ca acting on the temptation is a sin. Okay. We all know the difference between the suggestion and the action. By being tempted, that's your will to be tempted, right? Mm, uh, no, like the, the imagination is a factory of thought. It produces thought because it's there for us to um, assess and um, make uh, assessments of danger and assessments of opportunity. So the, the imagination will create thoughts in a very unconscious way, back to conscious and unconscious knowledge. Your imagination, you know and I know, because we've all done it and he knows, our imagination will imagine things without us having any particular control over it. Agreed? You've sat there, you've not been thinking, you've not intentionally thought to yourself, I will now imagine X, yeah. but then you've imagined X for some reason. Agreed? Yeah, yeah. Right, that's an example of conscious and unconscious knowledge. Yeah, but that's also an example of the fact that your will, your will is not necessarily in control of all the faculties of your mind in a conscious way. Yeah, so Christ by his human will, by his human nature, is tempted by the devil. But God the Father can't be tempted in the same manner, right? God the Father never became a man, so no. Yeah, yeah. So in that instance, there's a difference of like will. I mean, in that instance, there's... Are you saying that the Father is different from the Son? Yeah, yeah. We, we believe that the Father is not the Son. Potential conflict in that moment. Is that what you mean? Yeah, um, Sorry, I was just trying to make my brief. But but let me let me come back yeah. to you because because I I I I I I, 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 I I'm, go on. I'll let you ask more questions. Sorry, sorry. It was yeah. just um, I just the last comment on this one. Yeah. It was just um, in regards to like if the human's will through like that situation he's in is not to be sacrificed, and if he's just like succumbing to no. Hold on. Yeah. It doesn't say that in the text. I re I'm sorry. I, I know no, I did find something. But but the text really doesn't say that. What the text demonstrates is that the will of Jesus is to do the Father's will. It is not showing that the will of Jesus isn't to go to the cross. Because it says, it says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. So the will of the Son, the will of Jesus Christ, is that the Father's will be accomplished. That's what that prayer is about. He's praying to accomplish the will of the Father. And that's fair to the text. Now, much more importantly for our conversation is how does a story about Jesus praying in the garden actually teach us anything? That, that's really when you start doing Bible study. When you go beyond these kind of silly, and you're not making them in a silly way, you're sincere, I get that. But lots of the Dawah team make them in a silly way. But is how do we then go beyond the simple text to applying it to our lives? Because what, what's that's demonstrating is firstly, that the perf a perfect human being is one who does the will of God before anything else. That should be our prayer. Not that our will should be done, but that God's will should be done. That should be the prayer of every Christian. That should be the prayer of every human being, to do God's will, right? But also what it shows is, is that we can lift before our Heavenly Father all of our anxieties, all of our stresses, stresses, all of our pressures, all of the things that we're struggling with, all of our worries, even our worries about the things that we know God is calling us to. Because we Christians believe in this idea of vocation, the idea of calling. But that doesn't come anxiety free, trust me, I know, right? Anyone who's trying to follow a vocation will suffer anxiety. And we can lift our anxieties before the Father. And what it also means is that God is free to do with us what he wants to do, even if it means our death. We Christians must follow the will of God, even if by doing so we die. That is the level of submission that a Christian is called to. Now, in anything of the teaching points, yeah, is there any problem with those teaching points? I mean, 
personally I have a few issues, but I can understand I understand the whole holistic like world yeah. and more, so I really yeah. appreciate that. So. Is there any other questions? Because I do want to ask you questions, but I want to yeah, let you yeah, ask sure. all your questions. Uh, I think that's in my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Isn't that a conflict of will? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think it's a conflict of wills? Yeah. Is it? Because you can't be forsaken if you have the same will. No, that doesn't follow. Christ in his humanity is giving out a cry of anguish. Again. questioning his will. No, no. It is, it is a, a cry of anguish to a man who's dying on the cross. Lots of good Christians cry out similar things. It doesn't mean that they've stopped being Christian. It's just a human expression of pain. But even, but even when Christ cries out in pain, he still points us towards something. Have you read Psalm 22? Have you read Psalm 22? Maybe at some point. Have you read Psalm 22? It comes from Psalm 22 as well. Yeah. 22 too. Psalm 20. Sorry, thank you, Carl. Sorry, yeah. As yes, please. Just, yeah. uh, as the New Testament because just quoted Psalm 22. Bro, if you, if you, bear, uh, yeah. So Christ, Christ is is pointing back to a prophecy that predates him by hundreds of years. These are the Psalms of David. Yeah. These were written around 9th, 10th century, so a thousand years before Christ. Yeah. Even before crucifixion was invented. Listen to this description. But there's also some psalms in there that are mis mis Sorry, mis let, let, let's let's Sorry. actually just deal with this psalm before we jump around. Yeah, it says, and I'm just going to cut to the chase. Yeah, um, they open wide their mouths at me as ravening and roaring lions. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax; it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil dovers have encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I think in the original Hebrew, though, there's a bit of questioning about... The no, no, place. no, there isn't. This is the Septuagint, which was translated... One second. The Septuagint was translated 200 years before Christ. Yeah. What you're talking about is the Masoretic text, and the Masoretic text is after Christ. The one where it says, bound by my hands and feet. No, it doesn't say bound. It says that lions have opened wide yeah. my hands hands and my feet. But that's the Masoretic text and it is after Christ. I'm actually using a Jewish document, the Septuagint, translated by Jews 200 years before Jesus and they say pierced my hands and my feet. Now tell me, that description is a description of crucifixion. It's not a coincidence that whilst Christ, out, Christ cries out in anguish and pain, Eloi Eloi Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That he's quoting a very psalm that prophesies a crucifixion. I just want to, I think it's, I'm not or sure which psalm it is, but I'm not sure how you can reconcile, because there's another messianic psalm, a few messianic psalms, they talk about God saving him. Can you deal with this one first? Yeah, yeah. And then we'll go on yeah, to that. I mean, can you deal with this one first? I mean, we have a prophecy that talks about Christ being crucified, the Messiah being crucified. But, I mean, in, according to my previous understanding, it was like um, the lion one you mentioned, and I also I've already told you one. that's a Masoretic text. It was after Christ. I'm, told, I'm using the Septuagint, which is earlier than the Masoretic. Well, I think text. there is one where it talks about being bound by your hands. No, it, what it says is lions have opened wide my hands and my feet, or lions have bit into my hands and my feet, or they have like dug their their claws into my hands and my feet. But that's think, the Masoretic. I think there's text. another one. I'm not sure, but I feel like there's another one. That might just be a different translation. Yeah. Because if I bind something with nails, I've still bound it. But it says. But then, but then, I think of Isaiah 53. So, but I think that still is just pierced my transgression. Yeah. That's what you're thinking but I think that's still the same. But, but I, want you to I want you to deal with this. Christ is appealing to a prophecy. Eloi Eloi Sabachthani is a prophecy of a crucified Messiah. Now, let me ask you this question. We know that Christ. Would you agree with me that if we have an event in history. And group A says X happened in history, and group B says Y happened in history. Both of those statements can't both be true. One of them has to be wrong. Yeah. Now, if we have two groups that say X and Y about the same event in history, how would we go about ascertaining who's telling the truth and who's telling a lie? The one where God is speaking himself. The one where God is speaking himself. Okay, so it, it, you're, you're saying that we're not going to do any investigation. No, no, no. no. 
So, when, so the next time that there's a, a, a court case and two people are um, disputing about what happened in history, you're going to say, what did God say, as a way of finding out the truth? No, but I mean, if we have access to the fact that God said that, we're going to take that as overriding any sort of evidence, right? Right, so, so you admit that without that knowledge, without that word... Now, what happens if two people say God said this in history? I mean, if one of them, we can prove... Yes, how yeah. would you prove it? By like, examining the evidence. Whether God did brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Examining the evidence. So we have two, two. Oh, we have two gods. We have Yahweh, who says his Messiah was crucified, and we have Muhammad's God that says Christ was not crucified. How do we find out which God is telling the truth? By examining the evidence. By examining the evidence of both. Would you agree that it's a statement about history? Is it would it, is it a statement about history no, I mean, to say Jesus wasn't crucified? Not no, what do you mean? Is it a statement about history to say Jesus wasn't crucified? I mean, if there's a divine um, interception in that moment... I'm just asking you if it's a historical statement. Yeah, yeah. Is it? I mean... Is it? It's just an historical statement. Jesus was not crucified. Have I made a statement about history? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So when it comes to examination of history, it's fair to say that this is a historical question. We can apply historical methods of, of finding out what happened, right? Like we would about Muhammad's life. Right. Brilliant. So, the Gospels are earlier than the Quran, correct? Yeah. The Gospels were written. The, the Gospels were written within the time, within the the the, the sort of generation of Christ. I don't necessarily believe that. Okay, fair enough. When when do you think they were written? I feel like they were written like a, few, like a couple of generations after probably. Because the earliest manuscript we have, I feel, of the New Testament, I think it's in Manchester. Yep. And it's the um, fragment of Gospel of John. And yep. that was, I think, carbon dated to... Date to, to no, they didn't carbon date it. 1 to 120. Yeah, 120. 1 to 120, which means that that is either an original or it is a early copy of an original by a generation or two. There's nothing in that statement, in that section, because I've visited it. Yeah. There's nothing in there that contradicts the Quran. But, but, that, that, but, but hold on. The fact of the matter is, what that demonstrates is that, is that there was a, a, a literature called the Gospel of John, a literature that, that has been copied, that... that is within that generation it's within that time it's kind of like because for it to be a copy means like one or two copies back scholars attest that it is around 90 AD that the Gospel of John was written okay. would you agree that's a lot closer than the Quran I don't because it's, an, it's a, you can't really compare the traditions because one's more oral based and one's more like literally. are you saying that the Quran existed in the first century oh no oh, sorry I thought you meant something else oh yeah, yeah. so no, no, I mean, so which is closer is like to the time created. which is closer to the time the Quran or the Bible the New Testament the okay. Gospels in my belief the Quran is like uncreated the uncreated word of God so it's always been there but I mean in terms of I mean that, to say. That, that creates a problem but I'm not going to get off the crucifixion just yeah. yet we've got that the Gospels were there at the time the Quran was not there at the time yeah, yeah. right we've got that the Gospels um, are attesting to the crucifixion agreed yeah the, the, the point of the revelation of the Quran is to uh, like one of the reasons Bro, is to clarify I'm, I'm making a really simple historical argument like you can come up with what I, I'm just asking you to tell if, if I'm saying something that is logically flawed point it out at the okay, time okay, I'm sorry. right is it lo is it correct to say that the Gospels were written before the Quran is it correct to say that the Gospels were written around the lifetime of Jesus? That's where I have, like, the So when were they written? I thought, like, the earliest, like, the earliest part of the New Testament is, like, the letters of God. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they were written, the, 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 for instance, 1 Corinthians 15 was written within 10 years of Christ's crucifixion. Have you got anything that close to the crucifixion? I mean, we have chains of transmission so. that go back to Jesus's time. I think there's like so you've got a narration about Jesus not being crucified that goes back to Jesus's time. You can show me all the, the links. The link, no, no, I can't. So I'll ask you again. Be, I, I so we have Paul's letters that talk about the crucifixion of Jesus that were written within ten years of the actual event. Do you have anything that close? 
what I'm saying is... It's a really simple question, yeah. bro. No, do no, you no, have no, anything that close? At the moment, I can't say that. I can't say I do, yeah. You know the, what the real answer there is? The real answer is no, you don't. Like, we both, bro, we both know the Quran was written in the 7th century. That's 600 years later. So I don't know why you're equivocating over this. But the reason... I'm not asking you, I, I'm just asking you to uh, answer really simple logical questions. So I'll ask you again. The letter of Paul was written within 10 years of the crucifixion event. Do you have anything that close? I'm not saying I, I, I'm not saying it's written within ten years, but I agree that I don't have anything that close to the whole thing. Right. So it's nothing that close. Do you agree that the Gospels and the letters of Paul were written independently of one another? I, I can't. So I, Paul I, I can't didn't write that. the Gospel of John. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. You agree well, to I, that? I don't agree. Do you that agree John, that Paul didn't write the Gospel of Mark? I don't agree that John wrote the Gospel of Mark. That's fine. And for the sake of argument, I'll agree with you. John didn't write the Gospel of John. Okay. But do you agree that Paul didn't write the Gospel of John? Like, yeah. yeah. Do you agree that Paul didn't write the Gospel of Mark? Um, yeah. I mean, Do you I, I agree mean, that the author of Mark and the author of John are not the same person? Whoever that person yeah, yeah, yeah. is. Yeah. Right, so we have early and independent attestations to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of like... Early and independent. Why is that? Do you understand why that's important? I can see you. Yeah, tell, me, tell, tell everyone why that is important. Okay, because yeah. so, you're basically saying like because there's multiple sources and they're saying the same things. Yeah. But there also is like there has been additions in regards to the whole resurrection. That's fine. Let's pretend there is. Yeah. But let's just pretend there is. Let's like, just pretend yeah, there is. We're talking about the crucifixion right now. Yeah. Right. For the sake of argument, the resurrection was made up later. Just talking about the crucifixion right now. So we have multiple attestations that are independent of one another that all say Jesus was crucified. Now, you and I both know. That if there was a fight in this park and the police came, they'd start asking different people what happened, what happened, what happened, yeah? And they'd try to discern the truth by looking at the various different video clips and listening to different people's stories. So what they would do is they would sift the evidence for that kernel of truth. Agreed? And, you're say and, 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 and you would do the same in just about every other situation when you're dealing with something to do with a past that's controversial, right? Well, I would say like, say there is something like current and current. I just want you to answer mine. No, I understand would that. you do the same? Yeah, I understand. So that. why, when it comes to the crucifixion of Jesus, do you not do the same? Okay, so current historical evidence, let's say, yeah. says that Adam doesn't exist, that there wasn't some, someone called Adam, but Christian belief says that there was someone called I'm Adam. A Christian, so you're going against... I don't believe that Adam was a real person. Sorry. I'm a Christian. I don't believe that Adam was a real person. What's your interpretation of it? We're not talking about Adam, okay. we're talking about the crucifixion. No, but I, I'm giving an example where you would have the same but viewpoint you, as me. Clearly we don't, so we're talking about the crucifixion, let's okay. deal with the crucifixion. Yeah. So in this specific instance, I take the word of God, which I assume is the word of God, over any historical evidence, because it's the word of God, and God is the highest source of evidence. Alright, so let's, since, since you're not going to deal with my argument, let's go on to the Quran. No, no, I, I, I'll deal with it. Okay, so, possibly, according to current historical like understanding, the crucifixion is more likely scenario or whatever. Right, which, means, which means that the Quran, the Quran is making a statement that is contradicted by all the available evidence, right? I don't know enough about the crucifixion to say all the available evidence. But... Well, all the available evidence says that Christ was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Show me any evidence that says otherwise. I mean, I'll have to look into it. You'll say the Quran, right? Yeah, yeah. But the Quran does not count as evidence. Because it wasn't there, it wasn't written by an eyewitness, it wasn't there at the time. It's written in a different language, in a foreign land, hundreds of years later. Okay. Motivated by a man whose reason for arguing otherwise is because he couldn't accept that a prophet of God would be crucified. What I'm saying is, there is circumstances where the Christian viewpoint doesn't agree with the historical evidence, but you still take the Christian yeah, viewpoint because it's the, way the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, there, there, there has to be. A, like, see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, we've got we've got the we've got um, the, uh, the historical construct about Israel conquering the land of Palestine. Yeah, yeah. But actually, I am not one of these biblical fundamentalists who say that that I have to believe literally in every part of the Bible as written. That's not how I understand the Christian faith. Okay. But let's come on to the Quran because it's relevant back to the incarnation again. Okay. Yeah. Are they still picking us up? Yeah. So back Sorry, to the. Back, no, 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 no. You're really not. You're really not. And I appreciate talking to you because you sound sincere and you sound genuine. And actually, I come to the park to speak to people like you. 
not not the, that guy. So coming back to the Quran, I, I, you would say that the the Quran is eternal. Yeah, of course. So it shares in the divine attribute of eternality, right? Right. Do you, when you say the Quran, do you say that the book Quran? No, no, no. What, what are you saying is sharing in the speech, speech? The speech of Allah, right, is eternal. Yes? Okay. Now, who brought that speech to Muhammad? The angel gave it. So he had to receive it, right? He had to cop he had to hold it within himself to bring it to Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I think so there that, might be some. Hadith so that means that a, an angel carries the eternal word of Allah within himself. No, it's just transmitting. It's just transmitting. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. these these words then are not the words of Allah. No, I mean, like, I, can, I, can, Allah. I can transmit it to you. But is it created or uncreated at that point? Like it's 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 created. It's, like, it's, it's created. Yeah. The so, actual concept. So the, is, like the, the number one, for example, I can write the number one, and that's created, right? Yeah. But the actual concept of the number one is uncreated. Are you saying numbers are uncreated? I mean, I'm, that was just an example. But, but that is what you just said. I thought only Allah was uncreated. So is 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 no, I'm giving, is, I'm giving is, it from is, the, is a number uncreated? Numbers are created, as far as I'm concerned. So. Are words created? No, I'm, I mean, when in creation they're created. Yeah. But independent of creation, they're not created. Okay. So, coming back to the speech of Allah. Yeah. This, this, it says that there are, if I understand it correctly, within Islamic tradition, there are eternal tablets, stone tablets in heaven. Is that correct? Yeah, there are tablets in heaven. Tablets in heaven. Are these, are these tablets, are these tablets created or uncreated? I actually don't know that specifically, but I can get back to you on that specifically. I think, my, my, I think they were written, they were written, so... Yeah. My, 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 my point is, so they, yeah, created, but there, there is so they were created. But there's no, 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 I'm talking about the Quran. That has always, the whole concept of the Quran in heaven. Like the concept or the actual yeah. words? Do the words of the Quran, are the words of the Quran eternal? In other words, is the speech, is the speech of Iblis that is recorded in the Quran eternal or, or not? In some way, shape, or form, but it could be it could be different to our reality. So, so what we've got, right? If the Quran is eternal, then that means it is eternally recorded the speech of Iblis, which means that the words of Iblis are also eternal. Do you believe that the words of Iblis are eternal? No. But yet the Quran quotes Iblis. It's quoting like something like in the future because Iblis was created right right yeah but but those words are eternal are they Allah's words or are they Iblis's words so Iblis is speaking the word of Allah but you can you can talk about a situation in the future where do you see what I'm saying you're saying it's what prophecy yeah, yeah but my point to you is if those are actually the words of Iblis then that means that Iblis's words are eternal if they're actually the words of Allah, then that okay. means that Iblis is speaking the word of Allah. But that's like saying, okay. Do you believe that Iblis was speaking the words of Allah no, at that I'm point? No, I'm saying that's, uh, that's words. Like, you can, let's say there's a hypothetical character I create in the future. And I say, that character says this. That's not necessarily his words, do you know what I'm saying? But, but that's what I'm asking you. Yeah. Are these the words of Allah or the words of Iblis? I mean, according to my current understanding, it's the words of Allah that he goes on to Allah. That's, that he's like attributing to So Iblis, Iblis spoke those words of Allah. So he didn't speak the words of Allah, so these are the words of Iblis then? It's like a pro I don't really see my point is, if you're saying that the Quran is eternal, then everything that's recorded in the Quran is also eternal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a problem, because there's speech of created things in the Quran. Yeah, but those created things don't necessarily have to be created for there to be speech recording an uncreated thing. So my, my point, my point. So my point to you is that in terms of in terms of the attributes of Allah. Allah's attributes enter into creation according to Allah's attributes enter into creation according to Islamic doctrine. 
because Allah is either uh, Iblis is either speaking the words of Allah or he's speaking his own words if he's speaking his own words those words are eternal eternally the words of Iblis if he's speaking the words of Allah then Allah's words have entered creation I, don't, I believe the second statement but I don't believe that they've entered creation I don't see how you make that link. Because, because those words are eternal, right? Are they eternal or not? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But those words by Allah are, Allah are not the same as the words of Iblis. But they are. He's, he's like quoting. So, so does, does Allah misquote Iblis? So Iblis no, no, said no. something different? So Iblis did say but those words? Iblis saying it is not the same as what God says. Do you believe that these accounts, do you believe that Allah... Do you believe that this book is perfect? Not this translation, yeah, the, Arabic. the Arabic. Right. So when Allah is, is talking about the dialogue, have you ever compared the dialogue um, of, of what happened between Allah and Iblis in the Quran? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, you, you, have you ever put them side by side to one another? Synoptically. Right, it's interesting if you do. Because they actually give different accounts of the same event. Yeah, do you want to look at that? Yeah, have you got a Quran? Um, I think I've got, I think I might have. So, uh, sorry, this is just um, while you guys search it up. I was just wondering, do you believe Muslims worship the same God? No. No. No, I don't. Do you want something you believe we're committing pagan? No, actually, I was just saying that to that guy because he keeps calling me. Uh, 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 um, so you don't believe Islam is pagan? Do I believe that Islam is pagan? No. no. I, believe, I don't believe it's a true religion, but no, I don't believe it's pagan. Because pagans believe in pantheism, and I know that Muslims are pantheists. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, a but cheap from my, shot. from my perspective, Christianity is pantheist. Uh, wait, wait, why do, why, why do you think that Christianity is pantheist? I mean, I know, I know you get like quite a good explanation. If you go to Surah 2, yeah. Ayah 30 to 39, and I'm going to go to Surah 7. Go on. I know you gave quite a good explanation and I'll have to like review it. I mean, there's a video going up. Yeah, this video. I'll, I'll look at it like once more to like try and fully grasp it. But I still believe the whole attributes thing about if God can limit his actions. Like, you mean like Allah does when he's not merciful? I mean, I am. Let, let, let's let's yeah, go back to that one. Six, no, let's go back. Let's five, go back five, to that one. I want to drill that home because I'm not having you walk out of this park thinking that we're not, we're doing something wrong. Allah is merciful, right? Who is he merciful to before creation? Just before of him. Like he at that before creation, he had the intention of being of creating creation, and surely that's a merciful thing. That no, my my, my question to you, that's an aspect of knowledge. Who is he merciful to? Because mercy is a transaction. You know the quick, you know the quickest way to disprove my argument. Give me an example of mercy that isn't a transaction. Um, just the fact that he's created so much beauty in nature. Creation is a transaction. Give me another one. Uh, uh, okay, can I just deal with this? Yeah, There's yeah, one question. Don't run away. I want to finish our conversation. One quick question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Christians should be willing to die as martyrs for Christ. Yes, for Christ's sake. No Christian will disagree with you. Why? We should be willing to sacrifice our lives for Jesus. And you said after that, you said prison, even prison. Yes. Christians should be willing to go for prison. Don't kill him. Did I say killing? Huh? Did I say killing? It sound like, yeah. That's just your interpretation. What's the martyrdom? What's the martyrdom? martyrdom is dying for what you believe in. It's a witness. It's not going to fight or a true Christian is willing to die for his faith. Full stop. What? How? How? So if, if like, someone kills me, I'm willing to die for my faith. There you go, you see? You got it. Well done. But what are you going to do? You're going to kill other people? It depends on the circumstances. 
Depend on the circumstances. If a Muslim said that, he would be in prison by now. No, no, brother. If someone tried to stab you right now, I would fight to defend you. And if I fought to defend you in the only way I could defend you and me is to kill the other person, that's what I would do. Go, go back to the video. That's just your own interpretation, bro. Anyway, I've answered your question. Thank you so much. I, I don't believe in wimpy Christianity. I don't believe in wimpy Christianity. What, because I believe Christians should die as martyrs? It's not me or for other people. Carl, Carl, you're Christian? Yes. Do you believe Christians should die? I'm worried, I'm worried about the if, children. If the circumstance calls it, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried about find the me a, children. Find me a Christian. Uh, uh, find me a Christian that doesn't believe in martyrdom. Okay. Find me one. Go find I'm, me one. I'm worried about <laughs> the go find children. me a Christian that doesn't believe in martyrdom. Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go find me one. Listen, All right, anyway, I'm going to go back to my conversation yeah, yeah, now. I answered your question. Yeah. Right, so You're my question to you. Yeah. My question to you is this. My question to you is this. Um, who, like, Allah is, is unable to be merciful until there is someone to be merciful to. Because mercy is a transaction. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that it's not within his character, it's not within his content. But what that does mean is that that attribute is not in operation. Another example. Is one of the attributes of Allah that he is the creator? Yeah. Is creation eternal? Yeah. So there was a point when Allah was not the creator. I don't, I don't want to comment on that. I'm no, 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 I'm, I'm mean, asking like, you yeah. to comment. Sorry? I'm asking you to comment. No, but I don't want to, like, I don't, I don't want to go against... Is Allah always a creator? Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's a always creator. a creator. So that means that the must, creation must be eternal. Otherwise, Allah, what is Allah creating? Himself? Does Allah create himself? The, the, there's, a high, there's a possibility that there was creation before this creation. One, one second. So he's always created. What, one second. If Allah is always the creator, what is he creating? His own thoughts? What aspect of Allah is being created yeah, by Allah? So you're saying that, the, that Allah creates himself? No, you're not saying that. So let's ask a question again. It says that Allah is a creator. Who? What is he creating? Thank you. Um, I'm not too familiar with that aspect. Hold it over the guest. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Right, my point is this. My point is this. We both know that, that, that Allah has the potential to create. We both know that Allah has the ability to be merciful. Not disputing that. What I'm pointing out is that, 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 that those, those attributes are not in operation until Allah actually creates something that he can be merciful to. Okay, so you're not arguing. You're just I'm not an arguing. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not arguing no, that Allah it. is not a creator yeah, yeah, yeah. and that Allah is not merciful. I'm arguing that those attributes are oh, not in operation. Hold, and they're on hold. Yeah. Exactly. So when God enters into his creation in the sun, takes on the fullness of humanity, his knowledge is not fully in operation. You have the same idea in your beliefs. I agree. I, therefore, I, it's not a problem in ours. I, under, I understand. But I'm saying just that the fact that his knowledge is not in operation is quite dangerous if he's on earth. Because that could mean that he could forget that he's God. Yeah, but but but, but could have, would have, could have. The fact but how is, do we know? The fact right? is, he didn't. But I mean, he could be here right now as God. Like, but he's just forgotten. This is this is this is just a a hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical. All right. Means let, it's let, possibility. Right? Let, 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 let's just deal with it. Yeah, sure. Okay. So the reality is that within Islam, you have this idea that Allah doesn't operate in all of his attributes. I mean, I'll, I'll go on. right. Well, no, that is. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Show me my logic is wrong. Is my logic wrong? My logic is sound, right? Now, that means, therefore, that the attributes of Allah are dependent on creation. Agreed? Logically? I think. I personally don't view that they're not dependent. But... Right. So, who is he merciful to before creation, and who? How is he a creator before creation? Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're not going to throw hard questions at Christians and not expect some hard questions no, back. No, I, mean, I, I just had those questions. Like right, but let, let me ask you this. Doesn't he also say questions. that one of the attributes of Allah is that he's all-sufficient? Well, if Allah is all-sufficient, how, how is it that he needs creation to be the creator and he needs someone to be merciful? Grasp these attributes of God. In oh, this right, region. so you're saying that, that they can exist in a way without our full understanding. So we can say the same about the Incarnation then, can't we? 
we can a we can accept the incarnation the thing, along those lines. The issue is the incarnation is in this creation, whereas no. these attributes are outside the creation. But, but they are dependent so, on creation. No, but I mean, if they're out, the incarnation is happening in creation. Yeah, like but the, the point the, the point is yeah. what I'm saying is if it is acceptable for you to believe that God is the creator before he's created anything and he's merciful before he has anyone to be merciful to, whether that's a thing or a person, and you, you just say, well, we accept it as a mystery, then there's nothing wrong with Christians saying the same and there's nothing wrong with you accepting the incarnation in the same way. So my point to you is that you, you don't have a reason not to accept the incarnation along this line of argument. Okay. That is not a, a reason not to accept the incarnation. If you can accept mystery, we can accept mystery. And if we can, if you can accept, I can accept the mystery about your God. What I can't accept are Muslims creating double standards where they have one standard for their own religion and another standard for my religion. I'm not saying you're doing that. That's why, that's why I, I, I'm just saying I can't accept that. But you haven't got a reason not to accept the incarnation. I feel like they're slightly different because one's happening in creation, one's not happening in creation. But right, so let, let's look at this. One is not happening in creation. Yeah. Allah is a creator, Allah's, right? Allah's attributes are independent of creation, whereas right. this incarnation well, is happening in creation. Then, then your, your concept of God is illogical. Right. Because you're saying, so, so I'll show you why it's illogical. Sorry, I'm Allah is a creator, right? Yeah. Who is a creator to before creation? Can God pick up a rock? Can God create a rock that he can't pick up? It's below his majesty to do that. No, 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 that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a catchphrase. Deal with the question. Can it's God like create a, law, a rock that he can't pick up? But it doesn't befit his majesty to do that. So. No, no, no. The, 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 this is the question. Yes or no? The question no, is, how would you answer the, the, the question is illogical. The question makes no rational sense. It is an irrational statement to say that God creates a rock he can't pick up. That's an irrational statement. But it is also an irrational statement to say that Allah is created before he created. Now, we Christians have the same question, but we deal with it with a more sophisticated theology. Gregory of Palamas, who's another church father you should read, so that's two church fathers, Maximus the Confessor and Gregory of Palamas, speaks about the uncreated energies of God that have a moment of time from which they operate. So God as creator is an energy of God. And it begins at the moment he creates. God as merciful is an energy of God. It begins at the moment he is merciful. So it has a beginning in time, but it is an energy that is eternal. Okay. Now, don't rip off Christians' answers because the Quran says that you're not to be like the unbelievers. You're not like to be the Kufar. No, I mean, the Quran says you shouldn't copy me. So, so no, now let me I'm ask just, you the same question. I didn't, I didn't agree with, it, with what you said. I just accepted it as... Right. So now let me ask you the question. Okay. Who was God the creator to before he created? I'm, I'm saying like... Uh, Why can't you comment? Because... Like... Does the Quran describe God as creator? Does it say those attributes are eternal? So is it fair for me to conclude that Allah was always the creator? No, it's like... No. Uh, so these are not eternal attributes. You can, like... Are these eternal attributes or not? Right, if they're eternal, then I can conclude logically, and show me where my logic is wrong, that Allah has always been the creator. Correct? And, and what is the act of being a creator? It's to create, correct? Which means that creation itself has always been an eternal thing, right? No, because there could have been creation before. That. Exactly. So, yeah, but even then, that means that there was it, that, that, the, the, the infinite regression of creation is, it, is the only way you're going to get around this conundrum. But that means that creation is also eternal and that it is in a symbiotic relationship with its creator. I'm talking about like outside of creation, the whole concept of time is different to what we have here. So, I agree. Yeah, so we can't like these concepts are really hard to fathom in creation. Yes, we can't fathom something that's not creation. That's why God says it like. But it says that Allah so is a creator. From everything. Yeah, yeah, but it also says that he's, there's nothing like him. 
I know, this is problems. you got problems, bro. Your theology, as a Muslim, makes no rational sense. And the reason why it makes no rational sense is because the man that made it up and the people that developed it were not receiving inspiration from God. Well, they weren't. Or otherwise, they wouldn't come out with statements like, God is a creator even before creation. God was merciful even before there was someone to be merciful to. Which is exactly what you believe as a Muslim. And that is like saying that God creates a rock that he can't pick up. If, if there was, like, say, a first creation and he continuously creates from that point, he's still eternally the creator, right? What, sorry? If, it, if there was a point where there was the first creation, the first creation, right? The point where there was the first creation. Yeah. And then he eternally creates from that point onwards. Yeah. He is eternally the creator, right? No. Because there was there was a point before that at which he didn't create. But the whole thing. If we have a beginning of time, then that means there is a point before time. That the attributes the attributes are eternal. The, 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 bro, can we just be honest? The reason why you're struggling is because you're defending irrationality and you're a rational human being. Your rationality is telling you that this is nonsense, but your, 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 the but fact that you're a Muslim is telling you that you have to defend it. I thought you said the incarnation is a similar situation to this. No, I'm just saying that I could appeal to a similar kind of answer. And I'm saying that if it works for you, you have no objection if it works for me. Okay, and therefore fair. you have no reason not to accept it. But if you're going to argue, no, no, I'm not argue. But, but if you're going to make the argument, yeah. well, I can't become a Christian because I can't believe that God will have limits on his knowledge by virtue of his humanity, then you have a problem yourself because your belief in God is irrational. At least we have a rational explanation. We're saying that by virtue of his humanity, there is certain knowledge that is present. It's not gone away. It's not been destroyed. It's not been changed. It's actually there in the person of Christ. It's just not accessible to him by virtue of his humanity. Can we come back to the... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Right, so you've got... I've got Surah 2, um, verse, is it 30 to 38? I've got Surah 11. Like, if it gets really rainy, do you want to go inside for a yeah, coffee? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, we'll go to a coffee shop and continue. Yeah. yeah? So, I've got Surah 11, Surah 7, Ayah 11 to 25. Right. So this, so this issue is to do with these. Sorry, what was this again? So this is to do with like. So we're, we're talking about the Quran being the eternal word. Yeah. 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 And and a perfect book. And a perfect book. And there are words in the Quran which Iblis says. So, sorry. Are you aware of the Mutazilites? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel the current Islamic version is better than that? I think the Mutazilites had a more rational understanding of God than Hanbalis. I, I think the Mutazilites, the Mutazilites saying that the Quran was not so eternal I, I, was a far feel, more rational position. I feel the Mutazilites were going down the route that Renaissance Christianity has gone down, like where, like logic is appealing more. Like your logic is greater than the scripture, and when you interpret the scripture, it's through the, your lens of logic rather than the actual scripture itself. Right. Well, let's just deal with yeah, the scripture. Sure. So here is two accounts of the same event. Okay. Would you agree if two accounts are different, they can't both be right? Well, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to read uh, Surah 7, starting from verse 11, and we'll do it verse by verse. Okay. Until we get. So do I, where do I start? Well, you start from ver Surah 2, verse 30 to 39. Okay, right. It is we who created you and gave you shape, then we bade. Yeah, just pointing out that shape there, according to the Quran, is a created no, thing. No, that's, that's. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Okay. Then oh, we bade the angels bow down to Adam, which is Shirk, and they bowed down not so Iblis, who he refused to be of those who bow down. Do you want to read your first verse? So is this, when we told the angels bow down before Adam? You just read it, yeah, just read it from so, that. Okay. When we told the angels bow down before Adam, they all bowed, but not Iblis, who refused and was arrogant, he was disobedient. Allah said, what prevented thee from bowing down when I commanded thee? He said, I am better than thee he. Thou didst create me from fire and him from clay. We said, Adam, live with your wife in this garden. Both of you eat freely there as you will, but do not go near this tree or you will both become wrongdoers. Would you agree that there's a chronological difference there? Um, so this one saying... This is one where, where Alice says, bow down to the angels. Yeah. 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 And Allah is saying, no, to the uh, Allah said to the, what prevented the bowing down to Iblis? 
when I commanded thee, he said, I am, and then Iblis says, I am better than he, thou didst create me from fire and him from clay. But in this surah it says, so, so we're going, just read, just read the, the verse, bro. Yeah, yeah. Bad, when we told the angels bow down before Adam, they all bowed, but not Iblis, who refused his arrogance. And then what did Allah say? He was disobedient. Adam, live with your wife in this garden. Right, so would you agree that there, that there is at least a chronological difference here? We're gonna go, we're gonna go inside, bro. Yeah. It's too, too rainy, so we're gonna continue this conversation in a coffee, in a, a coffee shop. No, we're not able to film inside the coffee. That's true, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. i tell you what, so to wrap up whatever, like, this point, wrap yeah, it yeah. up here, and then you can carry on. Well, we camera. literally just moved on to a new point. So, <laughs> so, so we literally uh, just maybe, moved maybe on to a new point. Yeah, yeah, so this point, carry on. So, so, okay. You know why? Because they don't allow us to film. Okay, get to, get to the words that Iblis says. Um, when Iblis responds to Allah. Yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm not quite sure exactly you said the right. Where, where's the bit which... Sir, uh, sir, you're reading Ayah 2, 30, 39. One of them could, one of them's an accelerated... I, from what my understanding was, one of them's an accelerated timeline. Which one's not it's yours. not just an accelerated timeline, it's different words. Prophet, when your Lord told the angels I'm putting a success from Earth, he said, how can you put someone there who will cause damage and bloodshed? It's alright, I'll get there. Yeah, maybe you can... Okay. Surah 2, 30 to 39. Right. I can't find anything. So here it is. Says. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? Then did Satan make them. Oh, uh, hold on. Do you know what? You're right. I did give you the wrong place. Um, you're looking for 38. Um, shall we? Let's go into a cafe. Yeah. Let's yeah. go into a cafe. Sorry, guys. JC! JC, I'm going to do a quick wrap-up. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll just do a quick wrap-up of what we talked about, yeah. and then we'll go in and we'll, we'll do this. Brother, please hold this way. Sure. So, right, Bob, wrap up. what I wanted to demonstrate is that Muslims have no legitimate objection to the Incarnation. Their arguments about Christ not having full knowledge demonstrates the fact that Muslims have not taken the time to understand what Christians believe. Christians believe that the one person of Christ has two natures and operates out of those two natures. And that within the operation of the human nature, the divine nature is fully present, but it is, as it were, constrained within the human nature. Likewise, Muslims also believe that Allah's attributes are constrained. Who was Allah created? Who was Allah creating before creation? But he is considered to be creator. That's one of his divine attributes and it's eternal. Who was he merciful to before there was someone to be merciful to? That's an eternal attribute. But these kinds of statements saying that Allah is always eternal, eternally merciful, and he's always eternally the creator, are irrational statements. They're like saying that God can create a rock that he can't pick up. It is irrational beliefs, and that's why Muslims can't defend it. But yet, they, those same Muslims will try to criticize the Christian faith, saying that it's irrational. Yet there is nothing irrational by saying that the full knowledge of God was present in the person of Jesus Christ, but by virtue of his humanity, was not completely successful. So not su successful, not completely accessible. The reality is that God always defines the limits of our knowledge. And he did so at his own incarnation.